As far as obesity is concerned, we're past the ticking time bomb stage. The ticking time bomb happened about 15 to 20 years ago. The bomb has exploded, and at the moment, we've got to struggle as much as we can to clear up the mess that the bomb has delivered. When you have uh, weight issues, you know, it's like, do you control the food or does the food control you? Well, for me, the food controls me. A quarter of all adults in the UK are now obese, which is up 15% from 20 years ago. The World Health Organization has identified obesity as a global epidemic. GP and founder of the National Obesity Forum, Dr Ian Campbell, is one of the UK's most respected obesity and diet management specialists. He has even been awarded an MBE for his services to healthcare. Well, we've seen such an increase in the numbers of obese children and adults in this country over the past two decades that I don't actually see any sign of it reversing. We may begin to see a slowing down of the rate of increase, but certainly there are more obese adults in this country this year than there were last. Not only will more people's lives be at risk if the rates of obesity continue to rise in the UK, but so will the NHS. Obesity currently costs the NHS £47 billion a year, and there is forecasted to be a several billion pound deficit in funding over the next five years. I am extremely depressed about what will happen in the future. The first thing that the government will have when it comes back into power will be the fact that the NHS has got a funding gap which has got to be plugged immediately. So all the uh, intellectual power will go into what do we do about the funding gap. The second thing we have is the fact that GPs are saying that they are going to be retiring earlier. And the government of most of the parties want to uh, have 8,000 more GPs in the system. They won't come on board until 2035, uh, until 2023. And by that time, maybe 5,000 will have left. So we're going to be so short on GPs. We're going to have an M, uh, N, NHS, which is creaking. I have no doubt that the government will put off doing anything serious about obesity for a long time from now. And that is very, very depressing. And in the end, we will all suffer. Because if they do that, then the NHS itself is at risk of collapsing. Being obese means you carry a much greater risk of developing problems like high blood pressure, cholesterol, type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And people are living longer with those disabilities so the net effect is the burden on the NHS is set to increase and that will certainly incur a great deal of expense, it will take up a great deal of time within the NHS and it is already putting the NHS under strain. I can only see that intensifying as the years go by. Being obese means that you're much more at risk of developing what we call metabolic disease including type 2 diabetes and heart disease. It also puts you at risk of musculoskeletal disorders, pain in your lower back and hip and knees. It can cause uh, problems with sleep apnea and it increases the risk of some forms of cancer quite significantly. And all in all, if you die of an obesity related disease, you'll probably die nine years too early. To help people lose weight, obviously we have to encourage them to change their lifestyle, to be more active, to, to cut back on their, their calories. Sometimes we use medication to support that, sometimes we use psychological therapies. And for a very small minority of people, obesity surgery is very helpful. Now, there are several different types of surgery. There's the gastric bypass, which is really quite invasive. It disrupts the, in the internal organs to try and reduce the amount of food that's absorbed. And that's very expensive and can be very debilitating for an individual thereafter, but it does produce weight loss. The alternative to that is to use what's called a gastric band, which limits the volume of food that's in the stomach and creates a feeling of satiety, and through that, encourages people to eat less. Again, that's also effect effective, a bit less so than a gastric bypass, but it's a simpler and it's also a reversible procedure. Debbie Wood is 21 stone, which is twice what her body mass index should be. She has waited two years to get referral for bariatric weight loss surgery on the NHS. Basically, in order to have surgery, any kind of surgery, especially weight loss surgery, 
you know, you have to prove that you're dedicated enough to be able to follow the lifestyle change after the surgery. So what they do is they give you like a, um, a, a pre-op, pre-op uh, diet to follow. And this just gets you, you know, into a lifestyle, a healthier lifestyle before you have your surgery. Um, and that could be anything from a gastric band, it could be anything to a uh, laparoscopy, it could be anything to gastric sleeve or gastric bypass. Now, the three that I discussed with my bariatric dietitian were gastric surgery and gastric sleeve. Debbie has been given a strict diet regime from her dietitian, which includes eating six meals a day and keeping a food diary. She must lose seven kilograms for her dietitian meeting next month. Sometimes it can be classified as, oh, well, it's your fault, you know, you got overweight. But it's not really anybody to blame. There is no fault. There is no blame. It's just something that happens over time through bad food choices because we're not educated enough in how to have a healthy eating lifestyle. So what can be done to tackle the obesity epidemic in the UK? Fitness expert Emma Trent believes that prevention is key. She oversees free fitness classes for children and adults who suffer with obesity in Nottinghamshire, one of the many parts of the UK with high levels of obesity. I think that there needs to be more focus on prevention, so we shouldn't be waiting for people to become obese before we try and do something about it. Team Nottingham versus Obesity programme, um, that's doing exactly that in that it's, it's looking at prevention. Um, so within that project we're working with the inactive young people and people of an unhealthy weight or ones that are looking to become um, an unhealthy weight. Councillor Alex Norris agrees that prevention is key to tackling obesity within Nottinghamshire. There is a likelihood, an extra likelihood in this city that children may well be overweight but certainly that adults will have excess weight. So what we try to do, what we want to put in place is a scheme of healthy weight um, interventions all through the life course that will help people maintain a healthy weight and, and stay on a, a good path, especially early on. I've been doing the session now for about 10 weeks. Um, you get a 12 week course, it's part of the NHS who get you signed up for it. Um, lost about 15 kilos in total, which is good. Um, I feel a lot better myself. Um, and it's, it's almost like circuit training here, so it's a lot of, lot of hardcore exercise. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good. And uh, an hour and a half week for my regular setup I means great. With this, you have to go through NHS and your, your GP to get put on this course. It's not open for just for anybody to come in. Maybe if it was to make it into like a free course and anybody was welcome, that obviously get a lot more people involved. Uh, I've lost a roughly up two and a half stone, so it's fantastic. I was told about a year ago I got diabetes or on the verge of diabetes, and uh, <clears throat> I decided then. I was 18 stone or something, I decided that was enough. So um, I thought, right, I want to live a bit longer if I can. So find this place and make the most of it, enjoy it. I mean, there's no doubt I wouldn't do it on my own. Um, I don't like that, I'd like to so what, but you, you don't do it. But when you get here, um, these push you to do it, and it's good. Without that, you know, I'd, I'd, I don't think it'd make a big difference, but coming here with these and the competition that you've got is brilliant, wonderful. It's up to individuals, and if they don't want to do it, they're not going to do it, are they? No matter what incentives the government puts in, if they don't want to do it, they're not doing it. I mean, I've got two lovely grandchildren, and I want to go on seeing them a bit longer. You know what I mean? It's, that's my incentive anyway.